Welcome back. You are watching a special broadcast on the news center on electoral bonds. The Supreme Court has pulled up the State Bank of India for not disclosing the unique serial numbers linked to electoral bonds, thereby not entirely complying with the top court's previous orders. Ashmit Kumar is joining us, our legal editor. Ashmit, you have been covering this case in the Supreme Court. That is where this ball started rolling. Give us a sense of the observations of the court today and why are they significant in the electoral bonds episode. So 24 hours after uh, the uh, revelation of the data, we know who donated, we know which parties got how much, we don't know which donor donated how much to which party. Now, on the evening of March 14th, the Election Commission, as per the Supreme Court directions, published the electoral bond data supplied by the State Bank of India with one key ingredient missing. The data supplied was in two parts. Which party secured how much and which donors donated how much? But it had a missing link. SPI has not shared the unique serial numbers of individual bonds. Now, why is this serial number important? To answer that, we have to travel back in time to 2018. SPI at the time had written to the finance ministry asking for each bond to be given a unique alphanumeric number. The SPI had said that this will establish an audit trail. The bank also said that in case of law enforcement agencies seeking such information, such a serial number will help to source the information. Now, interestingly, finance ministry at that point had agreed towards assigning such a unique serial number to each bond. That is what has been cited by the petitioners before the Supreme Court. They argued that uh, having two separate lists of donors and parties is meaningless without knowing who donated to which party. Now, they claim that the serial number will help answer these questions. One, who bought the bonds? Number two, how much was being donated? And number three, which party received it? This rationale was echoed by the Supreme Court as well. The Chief Justice of India flagged how SBI had failed to share the serial numbers. The CGI observed that the court had asked the SPI to share all details, full disclosure. Let's also keep in mind that in the previous order of March 11th, the Supreme Court had warned the SPI against non-compliance. The Supreme Court order read in our court, we will be inclined to proceed against it, SPI, for willful disobedience of the judgment if SPI does not comply with the directions of this court. The Supreme Court has now issued a notice to the SPI. The bank must respond on why it did not reveal the serial number of each bond. SPI will have time only till the weekend to respond. The Supreme Court will resume hearing in this case on Monday. Meanwhile, the Supreme Court has also directed the Election Commission to publish data from political parties on contributions from individual donors. This information is expected to be published on Sunday. Both the SPI and the Election Commission clearly have a busy weekend ahead, Pariksha. Absolutely. Uh, we will be seeing more details. And clearly, as we were talking earlier, Ashmit, this is not the end of the road as far as the electoral bonds case in the Supreme Court goes. There will be more details coming out in the days to come. Uh, and tomorrow, we have the Election Commission press conference where they will announce the dates for the Lok Sabha elections. The model code of conduct will come into effect. And possibly the Election Commission will react to developments in the apex court as well. Let's... Uh, Continue with our guest, Shadan Farasat, Supreme Court advocate, and Anjali Bhardwaj, right to information activist, continue to be with us. Anjali Bhardwaj, coming back to you tomorrow, if SBI also gives up the recipient details, gives us the unique number, or gives us names of the political parties which have directly benefited from these donors, then how will this information actually help the citizen? Because before raising any questions against the company, entity, individual, uh, we must think that every individual or company can go and say, how can you link this to a particular contract that we got or a particular case against us? Giving a donation to a particular party was our choice. That's right. So let me just say what will come out if the SBI actually gives the unique bond numbers, uh, both for the purchasers and for the redeemers. What we will then be able to do is that we will be able to match who gave which bond worth how much money to which political party. So today, while we have data on who are the donors or rather the purchasers of the electoral bonds and who all redeemed, which political parties redeemed electoral bonds worth how much on which date. We do not have the names 
of the uh, donors or the purchasers and who those bonds went to, uh, to, the political parties to whom those bonds were donated. But you are absolutely right that uh, each of these uh, potential allegations that money was given for a quid pro quo, that uh, you know somebody uh, wanted a contract and therefore gave this as a, a donation to be able to get uh, a favorable uh, you know contract or uh, this was used as extortion money as we are seeing that in many cases there were uh, allegations and therefore investigation by agencies there were raids uh, on people on companies who then donated money through electoral bonds all of these are subjects of investigation i think uh, for a robust democracy it is very important that citizens have the right to know who is funding which political party when they go to vote, cast their votes. Because without that, they will not know who the party is likely to be influenced by. But beyond that, to when we cast, you know, before we cast any aspersions, it's important that there be a full investigation. And only then can one arrive at right. any kind of uh, a conclusion. Right. Uh, Mr. Farasat, let me come to you now and let me just draw your attention to the Election Commission in this case. Uh, the Election Commission, by its own admission, has given the data in a sealed cover to the Supreme Court. This data, what is this data? Well, as per the previous Supreme Court directions, it's quite clear the Election Commission was required to source information from political parties based on individual contributions that they received. This data, as per today's directions, the EC is expected to publish that on Sunday. Will this perhaps be the missing link that will draw uh, a, a direct match between the donor and the political party? No. So, there are two different things. I think, see, there is data between uh, the beginning of the scheme, that is February 2018, right till April, April 2019, when that interim order of the Supreme Court was passed. And that data relates to what the political parties received, correct? Now, that data will be published in the next two or three days as per the Supreme Court direction today. That data is what the political parties have with themselves. It may or may not reveal the identity of the persons who have donated to them. Yeah, my uh, my uh, in intuitive sense is that some of those uh, letters and data will, some of those won't. So really speaking, even for this period, that is for February 2018 till April 2019, I think the Supreme Court will eventually need to pass an order of the same kind which it has passed from April 2019 right up till uh, 2024, which is that uh, SBI itself should release the data along with that alphanumeric number. That is the only way you can actually do the full matching uh, of which electoral bond which went to which political party as if it was in cash. And that's really the alphanumeric number is the key on both the redeeming side as also uh, on the side of its issuance. And that will be the determinant factor. Otherwise, I don't think the data uh, will be able to be matched fully. Right, so the SBI here holds the key. The CGI there, finding it difficult to get through. First, there was an application for extension by SBI. Uh, then, no disclosure of these serial numbers. And now, a notice has been issued to the State Bank. I'd like to thank all of our panelists, uh, Mr. Krishnamurti, Mr. Farasat, as well as Ms. Bharatwaj, uh, for joining us and for throwing more light. Clearly, Monday will be a key day when the SPI will have to respond uh, with either the number or an explanation as to why no number. Uh, the CGI, of course, will be hearing this case once again, the CGI-led bench, and that will uh, give us more clarity on the way forward. With that, uh, we're heading into a short break, but don't go anywhere. On our electoral bonds case, we'll come back with much more analysis on the other side.